thank god for this wonderful opportunity the lord has given us to be together in this place through zoom and worship the lord and adore his holy name and i want to bring greetings from uh, ICA in Jacksonville assembly los angeles and uh, want to greet uh, uh, the church over here and i understand it is eternal life church of god in north california and uh, all the believers who are from the church and especially um, our dear pastor sam kuti and his family my brother uh, and also uh, raja mama probably she doesn't know me whatever uh, but we want to i'm so thankful that god has brought us together बीच में मैं हिंदी भी थोड़ा बहुत बोलूंगा मुझे हिंदी में बोलना बहुत अच्छा लगता है तो मुझे बताया गया कि कुछ हिंदी भाषी लोग भी यहाँ पर हैं तो हम थोड़ा बहुत हिंदी में भी बात करने की कोशिश करेंगे सो आई एम सो प्रिवलेज टू शेयर गॉड्स वर्ड to the church over here i've heard a lot of things about the church ever since pastor sam kuti came i was in touch with him and uh, we used to pray for each other and the church and the, i'm so happy that you are in the north we are in the south and holding two corners of california and you are fasting from there we are fasting from here and i believe that god will definitely bless the time together as we spend some time in the presence of god and i am also happy <clears throat> and thankful to the to the lord and also thankful to the church for giving me this opportunity you know i'm happy that you are in the in the fasting prayer i understand that once in a month you have the fasting definitely the lord who uh, uh was helping us will continue to speak to us this morning एंड प्रभु के वचन से हम थोड़ी देर मनन करने जा रहे हैं आज के संदर्भ में तो हम जैसे जैसे समय बढ़ता जाएगा और मैं आपके सामने कुछ एक मुख्य बिंदुओं को आपके सामने बताना चाहूंगा यू नो दिस वर्ल्ड इज गोइंग थ्रू दिस पैंडमिक एंड वी हैव नेवर एक्सपेक्टेड दिस काइंड ऑफ ए सिचुएशन इवन इन अल्ड स्ट्रीम and the world has never seen such a pandemic kind of situation so much uh, like this and to a lot, to this to this extent and as we know that the world is confused the leaders are confused political leaders financial lead, uh, those who are dealing with the finance and economists even the spiritual leaders across the world are confused and do not know what to do and to make it more specific even the believers believing community even the christian leaders are confused you now there are a lot of theologies that are coming up and uh, some of them are thinking whether jesus has come and gone and the tribulation which you find in the book of revelation has already started and some even asked me whether jesus has come and gone i said no worry don't don't worry about that jesus has not yet come because i know some saintly people are still here and i have contacted them so since they are there jesus has not come don't worry about it so likewise people are confused and do not know what to do and they are running here and there and it, and thing seems to be very uncertain isn't it and we think about lockdown now i heard that again we are going to go have go through another set of lockdown any moment and the governor has decided and in our county which is the largest in california or probably in the us is facing the biggest threat of virus but in this kind of situation we all ask one question to god what are you doing lord where are you and how are we going to face this हम ऐसे संकट में प्रभु से पूछते हम क्या करेंगे यू नो एंड व्हाट शुड ए चाइल्ड ऑफ गॉड डू इन दिस काइंड ऑफ अ सिचुएशन आई एम टेलिंग यू दैट वी नीड टू गेट इनटू द वर्ड वेयर वी गेट द आंसर्स फॉर ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स वी आर फेसिंग द वर्ल्ड आउटसाइड दे थिंक 
rationally and logically and try to bring kind of a solution, but they end up in more worse difficulties. But for a child of God, we have the word of God where we can get into and get the solution for all the problems. And being in the fasting prayer, I believe that the Lord is going to bless us in a very special way. I'm going to speak about a word which the Lord touched me and I believe the Lord will touch each one of us as well. I'm going to talk about the enveloping presence of God during this pandemic season. Enveloping presence of God, a covering presence of God. You know, there's a word called Shekinah in the Old Testament. And, uh, you know, I like the Hebrew words a lot because uh, while I was in Dehradun Bible College uh, for some years teaching there for quite some time, I used to teach, learn and teach the Hebrew language. So I really love that. And moreover, the Old Testament is written in the Hebrew language. So we'll get into some of the Hebrew words, one or two, and then try to understand the deeper meaning of that. So the word shekena in the Hebrew means dwelling or sitting. So when we say shekena glory, and that is the sitting, dwelling, glory or presence of God. People of Israel, when they went, when they went through the wilderness, we find that the Shekinah glory was dwelling with them, you know, in the tabernacle. And that is why they were protected in these 40 years of their wilderness journey. And I want to take your attention to the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, and try to look at uh, more into verse number 2 and see the nature of God and the activities of God uh, and in relation to, the, to his creation and try to connect that with our life. What does it read? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Please let me make a small uh, correction there in verse number two. See here, instead of saying the earth was without form, it should be the earth became without form and void. I will come to this verb in a few minutes time, but just keep in mind, I'm going to change this was to became. And I'll tell you why it is so. Uh, and that is the right way of interpreting that. And if you have an NIV Bible or some other versions, you will see that in the footnote, it is written as became. I'll tell you why. So we're going to talk about the covering, enveloping presence of God. Listen, we are going to look at the situation of earth. And you are going to connect that with your life, your personal life, your family life, or your church's life, or your nation's life. And we are going to connect that and see how in this pandemic, the covering presence of God is doing certain things in our lives. So please bear with me as I go fast and try to explain this point. First thing which we want to know, which we need to do, know is, the condition of man. By the way, I enjoyed the song which you are singing, English as well as Hindi song. I was so happy to hear that Hindi song uh, in, in, North, in Northern California because we also sing a little bit of Hindi in our churches. The first thing is the condition of mankind, verse number one. We see that God created a beautiful earth and the heavens in the beginning. And we know from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 10 and 11, that God made everything beautiful. Let me tell you that whatever God makes, He makes it beautiful. Whatever God makes, He makes it beautiful. 
उसमें कोई खोट नहीं होता है वॉट एवर गॉड मेक्स इज परफेक्ट एंड दैट इज वॉट ही डेड विद द क्रिएशन द हेवन आर ब्यूटिफुल द अर्थ वॉज ऑल्सो ब्यूटिफुल इट्स नॉट लाइक द अर्थ विच वी सी टूडे इट वॉज द फर्स्ट स्टेज ऑफ द अर्थ when we look at things around when we go to a, a place uh, and see mountains or snow we say wow because we are so amazed to look at the beauty of the creation of the nature but that's nothing before what uh, uh, compared to what god had created in the beginning after sin the earth was in a very bad shape but before that it was so beautiful which we can't even imagine and such is the condition of human life where the human beings adam and eve were also created beautifully you know they were so perfect that you can't even imagine before they committed sin and so is the society we are in so is the families we have you know i was just talking to somebody or in some place i was just telling that right after marriage i got a picture from one of our uh, uh, um, a new converts in himachal pradesh they got married yesterday probably they sent me the picture what a beautiful picture the bride and the groom standing and uh, and they were showing it to me and i i was just watching this before i jo- joined the meeting and they look so beautiful every marriages are like that isn't it on the day of marriage this looks so beautiful and everybody starts saying that oh everybody should be like this okay but unfortunately that doesn't stay the same you know after few weeks or few months unfortunately i'm not getting into that now so parmeshwar jab hame banata hai to khubsurat banata hai parivar bhi khubsurat hai the family is a beautiful the society is beautiful think about the church the first century church was so beautiful you know the day peter preached 3000 joined and 5000 they were singing praising all kinds of things going on and everybody were together in jerusalem worshiping the lord and all are very very happy and god likes that we like that and that's how god has created us and that's how god wants us oh the movement of the holy spirit people speaking in tongues or uh, or exercise in the gifts of the holy spirit and fasting and praying and all kinds of things beautiful but what happened to that beautiful earth and that's what you see in verse number 2 the condition of mankind was beautiful but very soon the condition changed the present condition of of the earth or mankind the earth became without form and void now like, let me focus on this verb this is the second verb verb v e r b used in the bible the hebrew wor- word is haya and haya has got two meanings and by the way hebrew words have two three or four meanings depending on the context they use that so here the verb haya means he it was or it became so what should we use there the earth was null and void or earth became null and void you know if you say it was null and void then you should try, you should understand that god made a null and void earth no it is not so let me give you a picture of a house where mothers you know arrange the bed in the morning so nicely and the children go to the school and come back and if the children are naughty by the time children come within 10 minutes there is a null and void situation in the house isn't it the bed sheet is lying there the table chairs are lying here and there so who did that not the mother not the father father and mother they did it very nicely they arranged the house by the time the naughty children come back home they make it into a null null and void situation so somebody is behind the situation that has happened in the bedroom bahut khoobsurat dharti prabhu ne banaya tha par iske piche koi mahashay the jinhone is dharti ki halat aise bana di wo kaun hai unko bolte hai mr lucifer and the tradition says that lucifer who was in who was having the custody of the earth 
was very beautiful. But when he was thrown out of heaven because of pride, the whole earth was cursed. You know, and that is called as Lucifer's flood in theological term. We all know about Noah's flood, but this is Lucifer's flood. And that's a flood that happened on earth. Now you, and, and that's what you read in verse number two. The waters were on the face of the surface of the earth and darkness was over it. So because of the de 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 demonic spirit, you see that the earth became null and void. So here we study that the earth came. And we understand that even in our lives, we were once upon a time so beautifully created. The family was so beautiful. The, the marriage was, life was so beautiful, you know. But what happened to that marriage life after three weeks or after three months or after a year? Then husband and wife are not in talking terms. Okay, I'll go on Hindi. So what happened to that beautiful family? Why they are not in talking terms? Church was full of joy. But how, what happened to the Corinthian church? Got divided into four parts. One says we are Apollos. One says we are Pauls. One says we are Peters. Who did that? The enemy did that. Remember, enemy has a role. We also have a role. <laughs> so we need to know that enemy is trying to destroy the peace of the family. The joy in the church. And the joy in our individual lives. That is what we need to know as a child of God. As Pastor Sam Kuti was saying, we need to know the will of God. We need to know, Lord, what is your will for me today? If we continue to ask for God's will, I tell you, God will definitely guide us and we will not have a null and void situation like this. This is what has happened to this, the society. This is what has happened to the whole world now. Now because of pandemic, because of the virus. A null and void situation. Now the word used there is tohu bohu. The Hebrew word is tohu bohu. You know what's the meaning of tohu bohu? The, it, it means waste or waste bin or useless thing. That's the meaning of tohu bohu in the actual Hebrew. You know, the earth which is so beautiful has turned out to be a waste bin. Have you ever noticed your waste bin? I know that everybody has a waste bin in your house. You know, you, you want the waste bin in your house, but nobody would go and take care of the waste bin, right? Nobody would sit near the waste bin and say, oh, wow, nice, so, so good looking waste bin. Nobody would sit there. Of course, you will sit on the sofa set, watch a beautiful TV and do all kinds of things, but no one would sit near the waste bin because the dirty smell will be there. You will be covering it and what do you do with the waste, waste bag? You pick up that and throw it every day morning. You don't want that waste bag to be there with you forever. This is the word used there in verse number two. <laughs> Earth has become tohu bohu. It has become waste and waste bin. We human beings, jab dekho, Parmeshwar ne dharti ko sundar banaya tha, ye kachada ban gya, kachade ka dabba ban gya. Hum kya karte hain? Kabhi bhi kachade ko hum ke paas baitne se pasand nahi karte. Khub badbu aati hai usme se. Phenk dete usse utha kar. This is what has happened to the waste bin, to the earth. If we were there in God's place, what would we have done? Tell me. Just like we do it every day. Say, come on, leave it, throw it. I want this. We would not like that kind of a earth. We would never appreciate to have it with us. See, that has happened to many families. So look at the prodigal son's case. He has messed up his life. 
sitting with the pigs and having his breakfast, but the pig says, don't eat our breakfast. You are so dirty that you cannot, you're not of our standard. You can't even have our breakfast. That's the condition of that boy who lived in a very wealthy house. What would we have done with that boy? Remember, that is our life sometimes. We were in that condition and God had mercy on us. God had his compassion over us. And so many families are like that, broken. When I talk to people around, I see many families are broken. Say, pastor, pray for us. I say, what happened? She's not talking to me. He's not talking to me. We have been leaving the same house, but we want a breakup. Many churches are at the verge of breaking. Unfortunately, there is smell, dirty smell coming out of many churches. People outside, when they come to a Christian church, they say, it's not good. We were better off in our life, in our, in our place. Now, when we come here, a lot of divisions, problems, corruption within us. We claim ourselves to be children of God. But the dirty smell is coming. A tohu bohu situation. The spirit of God is not given prominence. God is not the center of our lives. Now we are going to celebrate Christmas, right? <laughs> Within few days. But more than Jesus, somebody else is focused there. Unfortunately. I don't know about North California. It happens in other churches. Focus is taken away from God and Christ. Instead of Christocentric, it becomes, you know, self-centric from our lives. We don't have time for prayer. We don't have time to listen to the God, word of God. We don't have time to understand the will of God. We have our own ways to walk. And such people, such people end up in Tohu and Bohu. Unfortunately. And struggling to lead a Christian life. And some people, some I've heard some people say, Pastor, I, 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 I want to pray, but I can't pray. Bible What has happened to the church? What has happened to the spiritual fervor we had once upon a time? Oh, beautiful church, beautiful bride of Jesus. Beautiful children of God, what has happened to your prayer life? What has happened to your life of meditating the word of God? It has become a tohu bohu situation. Aha. Uh -huh. So what should God do? Everywhere virus has spread. What can we do? Where can we go? What is God doing? Now we're going to the second point. First one was the condition of mankind. We looked at it was the original condition. Then we looked at the present condition. Now look at what does God do? Number two, the spirit of God makes his presence even in the darkest moment. The spirit of God makes his presence even in the darkest moment. That's what we read in verse number two. The spirit of God was hovering over the earth dark lifeless earth you see that we see that when others have rejected others might have disqualified or given up our god is there with his presence that is what is written. The spirit of God was hovering over the waters. It teaches us the nature of God. There are many things, but I would just three, say three things about the nature which we learn from there. We were there, we would not have been there. We would just get, uh, leave that place and go. What do you do when your car breaks? You call AAA and say, okay, come on, pick it up. You don't stay with that. Let the showroom people or whatever, whoever, service people do that. We don't stay. But our God still says, stays there. What does it mean? It shows the nature of God. Number one, 
omniscient nature of God. God's omniscience. Omniscience means all-knowing God. Oh, one thing that we should understand. Sarva Jnani Parmeshwar ke subhav kam dekhte hain. When things are out of our hand, our God stays there and is telling us, I know what you are going through. Look at the picture of Hannah. Hannah was crying. She couldn't say any word. And Eli comes and he says, and he starts mocking her, you know, natural because she's not saying any word and just babbling. And he started making comments. And Hannah says, I am here with a broken heart. Even the chief priest could not understand what she was going through. But we see the Lord in heaven. He knows what Hannah was going through. This morning, some of you are going through a situation like Hannah. Crying all alone and you don't know what to do. But don't forget. Nothing happens without the knowledge of God. Hebrews 4.12 says, Everything is laid naked and bare before him. So I tell you, whether people around you know or not, my God knows about you. And nothing has happened without his knowledge. If something has happened, it is with his knowledge. And he has a purpose behind it. Even this virus has happened with the knowledge of God. And you may question that, is God bringing virus and destroying people? No, no, no. That's not the point I'm saying. I'm trying to tell you that he knows what's happening right inside your heart, right in your family. Omniscient God. Number two, the Roy nature of God. Roy. What do you mean by Roy? We say El Roy, El Roy. You know who is the first person to call God as El Roy? Is Hagar, Hagar. Genesis 16, 13, where she says, Oh God, you watch over me. You always see me, Lord. I'm running away from my master, Abraham's house. My son, Ishmael, is going to die any moment because he doesn't have water to drink. And what should I do? Then she called the name of the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees, for she said, have I also here seen him who sees me? Therefore, the well was called Bel Ber Lahai Roy. Roy means the one who sees. The one who sees. I'm telling you, some of you are sitting and crying like Hannah and saying, Lord, nobody is seeing me. But I want to tell you, just like the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters, he was watching over that. Very clearly in Deuteronomy 11, 12, it is written, the eyes of the Lord are upon Israel from the beginning of the year till the end of the year. Now we have come to December. From January onwards, his eyes were upon you, my friend. His eyes were upon you. See that? A land for which the Lord, you, your God cares. The eyes of the Lord, your God, are always on it from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. See, these are the promises of God. So he, he knows about you and he sees you all the time. So do not be discouraged, my brother. Do not be discouraged, my sister. Then finally, I want to tell you by being, by being in the darkest, darkest movement, what is God, God trying to say? That he never gives up on his nature. You and I may discard and say, throw it. Throw it in the west bean. Waste? Null and void? Throw it. Kuda hai phang do utha kar. Mera parmeshra kaam hai phang ke nikle nahi aya. Mainne abhi kaam pura nahi kiya. Abhi shuru ho raha hai. God says, I have, I am not going to give up on you. Your friends might have given up on you. Your own people might have given up on you. You yourself might have given up. You said, yes, I am done. Finish. Even Moses said, I am done. God said, no, 80 plus, <laughs> I'm going to do something for you. 80 plus, God says, not the time to retire. It's the time when I'm going to use you. You are not a tohu bohu. 
You may think that you are a tohu bohu. Some of you think that you are a tohu bohu. But my God says, I will start from the scratch. I know who has done that. But I am going to do something for you. This is what the Lord is doing for some of you this morning. Let me move forward. Our God never gives up on us. He, all, he knows about us. He keeps watching us. And he says, come on, I'm going to start something new from you. If you're going to start from where you put your full stop. God said, remove full stop. Put a comma there. Put a semicolon there. I have yet many things to do for you and your family, for your church. Sometimes you think that our church, I mean, it's, it won't grow. But. I want to tell you prophetically, if you believe, don't put a full stop there. Put a comma. God has not yet finished. He wants the church to grow. He wants the church to increase in number. And don't think that it's over. It's just beginning. Even in this pandemic, the Lord is going to do something for you. I have testimonies from our church members. When many people's jobs are laid, they, they, they're laid over. Some of our church members are being promoted. They got promotions and increments. Isn't that wonderful to hear? I always say that when the whole of Israel was going through famine, God made sure that his Elijahs will have their food, non-veg, two times a day, non-veg. <laughs> Elijah had non veg two times a day when Ahab and all were, so, were hungry and they were looking for food. That's what God does. I think this was the first lockdown in the Bible. Chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 was the first ever lockdown. Even this lockdown, God wanted to do. Let me go to the third main point. The first was the condition of mankind. The second is the Spirit of God makes his presence in the darkest movement. And the third one is. The Spirit of God enveloping over the dark situation. The Spirit of God enveloping or covering over the dark situation. Now let's come to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the last portion. What do you read there? Now you can read that very clearly. Can, can we see that there? The Spirit of God was hovering over it. Now listen. I'm going to talk about the covering presence of God. The Hebrew word used there is merach faith, merach faith. And that has come from the root word rakhab. If anybody wants to know what is that, rakhab. And that is it on the chat box. Now rakhab, very interesting word. Please, if you can meditate over it, it will really bless you. Parmeshwar परिस्थिति अंधेरे परिस्थिति में हमें ओढ़ता है ओढ़ता है ओढ़ के रखा हुआ है What do you mean by rakhab? You know, for that you need to come to Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 11. The same verb is used there in Deuteronomy 32 11. What does, what do you see there in Deuteronomy 32 11? And it says, yeah. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers, look at that, hovers over its young. Okay? Spreading, spreading out its wings, taking them up, carrying them on its wing. So the word, the verb hover is used in Genesis 1-2. The same word is used here. What does an eagle do? Hovers, covers her young with its with her wings now let me explain to this all of us uh, the meaning of it in a very simple term the word rahab means grow smoothly the word rahab also means move gently move gently uh -huh. another word which i like the most is which means to brood over something brood brood you know hindi mein bolte hain sena murgi jo hai apne ande ke upar kya karti hai seti that's the
picture we have to see in genesis chapter 1 verse 2 the spirit of god is hatching or brooding over the dark situation just like a mother hen is sitting over the eggs she what is why is she sitting over it to do something exactly like that the whole the spirit of god is sitting over this dark earth to do something in this null and void situation i'm going to tell you there are various things we can draw out i know within my limited time i'll be stopping but let me go forward what does it mean what does it mean by brooding over the darkness first thing is that it means to cover over the creation in the dark giving a cover covering over the dark earth nobody likes darkness but what is the holy spirit doing covering our god always covers and protects isn't it even though we have sinned against god humne galtiyan ki hain but by the blood through the blood of jesus father god looks at not your sin my sin but he looks at the blood of his son and he spares you and me what a beautiful picture isn't it brooding means covering you covering you nobody god doesn't want anybody to look at you and blame you and say look at the children of god look at that person who believed in jesus see the situation my god covers the dark area dark area parmeshwar aapke andhkar ke us sthiti ko cover karke dusron ko dikhata nahi mere bachchon ke kami ghati ko he knows we have weakness he knows we have gone wrong but he covers just like some parents <laughs> even when the children do mistake they cover it they uh, that doesn't mean that parents should not scold their children they should scold when they do mistake but we should be protective also pastors do that you know god does that that's the pastoral nature of god and he is able to do because he is light you and i cannot do that but my god can do that because he is light and no darkness can stand before my lord because the darkness will flee when he put on the light jab roshni aati to andhera bhag jata hai bolne ki zarurat nahi hai mr darkness jao karke bolne ki zarurat nahi apne aap darkness bhag jata hai this is what the very moment the lord covers you the fear leaves you the doubt leaves you the difficulties leave you that is what happens when the spirit of god starts brooding over you and covering you this morning i won't tell you any doubt any iota of doubt any kind of fear that you are being facing today i tell you the lord is brooding over you and let the fear leave you let the difficulties leave you let the doubt flee from you because you are being brooded by the holy spirit this is what the lord is telling you during this fasting prayer hallelujah the second thing which i want to draw out from that word is covering or brooding means it shows that intimacy of god with his nature intimacy look at the picture of mother hen sitting with the baby with the chicklets oh it shows so intimate so you know attached and mothers can understand what i am saying what do you do with your baby you want your babies to be always attached with you every mother thinks like that right even the fathers also think like that that's a kind of intimacy the lord wants you and me to be with him all the time parmeshwar hamare sath ek nazdeeki rishta banana chahta hai he doesn't he stays there but he also stays here and what he's saying he says even though everybody forsakes you i will never leave you nor forsake you even if, even though a mother forsakes her child i will never forsake you i am always with you 
that same intimacy the holy spirit wants to promise to each one of us he is there why don't we recognize that even when you're crying when even when you're alone in your house the lord is saying i am there to give you that intimate relationship the greek word for holy spirit is parakletos which means embracing clinging पवित्र आत्मा के लिए जो शब्द नए नियम में इस्तेमाल किया है उसका मतलब है आलंगन आलिंगन करने वाला सी दैट इज व्हाट द वर्ड सेज व्हाट डोंट यू बिलीव दैट व्हाट डोंट वी ट्रस्ट दैट गॉड ही नेवर लीव्स अस अलोन लेट मी मूव फॉरवर्ड द वर्ड ब्रूडिंग आल्सो मींस गिविंग अस सिक्योरिटी गिविंग अस सिक्योरिटी नाउ टेल मी व्हेन ए baby hen or chicken is under the mother's wing and i have tried that in my childhood i used to play with the you know chicken i you know when i used to go to kerala i used to you know i like because in kashmir and all we don't have so many like that so so when i come back to nilambur where pastor sam kuti is no so when my grandparents house there are a lot of chicken and uh, you know um, uh, all these birds and all i used to go after them run after them but i i am supposed to be careful when i am dealing with mother hen when the mother hen is is with her chicken with with her chicks with her chicks you need to be careful otherwise you will be hurt because even though mother hens are weak but when they are with their children they will attack you because they don't want their chicks to be attacked by और इवन टच्ड बाय एनीबॉडी मुर्गी के बच्चे के साथ जब मां होती है तब आप जरा उसके पास जाके देखना मुर्गी आपको घायल कर देगी आप वहां से हेलमेट पहन के जाना वापस नहीं आएंगे दोबारा हां दैट इज हाउ द मदर हैंड थिंक्स माय बेबी शुड बी प्रोटेक्टेड दैट दैट्स अ वर्ड यूज्ड देयर when the spirit of god is brooding over that it tells us that you need not worry hallelujah you know where is the most secure place not the united states of america i used to think that us is the most secure place in the world but ever since i landed here i changed my opinion no 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 <laughs> medical system is so complicated that you want to go and meet a doctor you know you need to wait for 3 months 2 months by the time you are healed and you get into another sickness and you get healed you know <laughs> so that's the kind go to urgent care emergency for that also you need to have appointment where is the security now tell me even the president is not secure virus doesn't need any passport or visa anybody's permission to go there it attacked everybody Now you cannot go out and shake hands with anybody you cannot go to the petrol pump why insecure and the best place for security is psalm 91 1 he who dwells in the shelter of the most high will rest in the shadow of the almighty my friends all the security which you see around you all the people around you might fail and will fail but the word of god says uh, the lord he who enter who he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty and i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in whom i will trust that's assurance each one of us have about our children about our family about our church even this pandemic i can tell you you and i are protected only by the blood of jesus only by the wings that god is covering us with sabhi फेल हो जाएंगे परंतु तो मेरे परमेश्वर का जो जो संभालने वाला जो पंख है वो आपको कभी फेल होने नहीं देगा Hallelujah! Virus will come and go, but His presence will stay with us. He will sustain us. He will protect 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 us.
point which I uh, you know, experienced and I want to share with you. Please listen very carefully. Parmeshwar ka vachan kehta hai brooding ka matlab kuch naye jeevan ki ho apeksha karna apeksha. Now listen, why do I say that? Mother hen sits over the egg. How many days? In Kerala, it is 21 days. I don't know. In California, Northern California, how many days? <laughs> Supposed to be 21 days, right? Okay. It keys in bad fear. What does the mother hen do? Think on the first day. Other chickens are walking around. Other birds are jumping, playing, watching WhatsApp and watching social media and all. Uh, only mother who doesn't watch WhatsApp, no time for WhatsApp, no time for social media, no time for any other media. I'm not against it. Please don't misunderstand me. But this mother is busy sitting there. Others are, he's wasting time in the Zoom meeting. He's wasting time in the Zoom prayer. Others are saying, those who don't attend. <laughs> but this mother senses, you may make fun of me. Mera majak uthalo, koi baat nahi. You are thinking that I am wasting time. But, but, but I see something is happening inside the egg. First day, second day, fifth day, tenth day. Others do not notice that. But only the mother hen noticed that. Other forces could not understand that. But the spirit of God who is brooding over the waters sees that there is a life that is being created inside this. Hallelujah. For 21 days, patiently, the mother hen is sitting over it and says, no, no, a life is being born. A shape is being born. I am seeing within 21 days, this eggshell will be broken and a chick is going to come out and I am going to rejoice with a new life that is being born. And others may not see that, but my Lord sees that. This morning, I want to tell you something, my friends. The Lord is brooding over your situation. Nobody will believe that. Nobody can believe that. But God says, if I am brooding over you, I see something happening inside you. Parmeshwar ke atma kehti hai, baaki log vishwas kare, na kare, mai tere pa se raha hoon, to iska matlab, tere andar mein kuch jaan ko paida kar raha hoon, kuch nai cheez ko paida kar raha hoon, that is what you see in verse, Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, and God said, let there be light, after verse number 2, and you know the rest of the story, for 6 days God created a beautiful earth, but for that, the spirit of God was brooding over it, this spirit of God brooded over Adam and Eve in their bad times. This spirit of God brooded over Noah in his bad times in the ark. This spirit of God brooded over Abraham during his bad times. 25 years and then he found Isaac. Hallelujah. This spirit of God brooded over 32. 2 to 3 million Israelites in the wilderness, when they were passing through the wilderness, he was brooding over them. Others were making fun of them. What are these people doing? But God said, they are going to get into Canaan. They are going to receive the promise which, has made, which I made to Abraham and they are going to be victorious people. And the same spirit of God was brooding over the New Testament church. And people thought they will destroy Christianity. They, they thought that they are going to, they, they have finished with Jesus' death. No, the spirit of God was brooding over the, over the tomb. And what happened on the third day? Jesus came out. Hallelujah. And the same thing happened with the, the 11 disciples. The same thing happened with the 120 people sitting in the upper room. And the spirit of God hovered over them, wooed over them, rooted over them. And here comes on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. And then the Holy Spirit came upon them. And a new explosion took place. Peter stands up and he 
to preach us with a new joy, with a new life. And there was a mighty revival. 3,000 people got saved and joined the church. Again, he preached. 5,000 got saved. And there's a big, mighty revival. And he's ruling over the situations. And he kept on, church got kept on increasing, growing. Even today, in the 21st century, the Spirit of God is brooding, covering over you, my friend, in your personal life. If you're sick, I want to tell you, the Lord is brooding over you, and your sickness is leaving you, and a new life is being formed out of you. Hallelujah. If your family is being disturbed, I tell you, the Spirit of God is brooding over you. You just need to submit yourself and say, Lord, I don't know anything. I can't see anything, but I know one thing. You are brooding over me. I know that my family is going to change. My church situation is going to change. My, my work situation is going to change. My family situation is going to change. My children's life is going to be changed. This is fasting prayer. I want the Holy Spirit to brood over me, Lord. Over my mind. Over my body. Over my heart. Over my job. Over my things, Lord. Prabhu, teri atma. Mere vikti ka tu roop mein. Mere paribar mein. Mere kalisya mein. Mere sharir mein. Mere atma mein. Mere dimag mein. Brood karne paai. Se ne paai. Ek naya jeevan. Prabhu, de raha hai. Nai asha ko. Nai umid ko. He's bringing new hope. New life. New joy into your life. Hallelujah. How many days, Lord? It has happened. It has been that I have prayed, spent time in prayer. Lord, when I sing, I want some people's life to be transformed. When I preach, some people's life should be transformed. When I pray, some people's life should be transformed. That is possible only when the, pray, the Spirit of God broods over me. Oh, let's commit our lives and submit our lives. Just like the earth was silently waiting for the redemption. Oh, by the master creator, the same thing is going to happen to you and me. Don't think about your age. Don't think about your situation. The situation may be dark. The situation may be null and void. Tohu bohu. You may have messed up. The situation might have messed up in your place. But don't worry about the finances. My Lord can bring a new life into the finances. My Lord can bring a new life into your family. Those who are waiting upon the Lord shall renew their strength and soar like an eagle and fly into the air. Hallelujah. Rama Shakta Nabara Baba. Several things things have happened. For the last more than 250 days, we have been praying the Zoom prayer in our church and more than 200 miracles have happened. I don't have time to tell you. One after other, demon spirits were leaving. Oh, those who joined the prayer meeting, people are filled with the Holy Spirit and this far speaking in tongues. Oh, cancer patients were healed and we saw the kidney patients, kidney stones broken, breaking out and they're getting healed. Oh, diabetic people are healed. So many miracles happened one after other. Not because somebody prayed. That's because the word of God says, when he broods over you, things will change. When he broods over you, and you believe that, things will change. In your life, Lord, in my personal life, in my family life, in my church's life, I want something happening. Let you, me, may you please brood over me. Brood over my mind. Mind, brood over my eyes, brood over my finances, brood over my studies. I tell you, new doors are being opened for you. You believe that? Praise the Lord. Start opening your mouth. Mukh khol ke dhanne baat karenge. Oh, agar aap shwas karte hain ki Prabhu mere liye rasta khol raha tha, apna mukh kholiye aur dhanne baat kare. Prabhu, tera brooding mere par hone paaye. Oh, if you believe, open your mouth and start bombarding praises and say, Lord, I don't see anything. My friends don't see anything, but you know that something is happening right now. Now, in this fasting prayer in the month of December, before the month of December ends, I want to see the fire of the Lord changing my dark situation and the light coming into my family. Oh, the light coming into my situation. Hallelujah. Even if it is cancer, the Lord can change the situation. I can tell you stories after stories. The Lord has done wonders. Hallelujah. This morning, I have a lot of things to tell you. Hallelujah. One brother who had diabetics and he was very, he was very going through a difficult time and we prayed in the Zoom prayer meeting and he next day he felt the presence of God touching him and forming a new life in him and he took some sugar and ate it and 
and said, no, I feel that I'm healed. Nobody would do that. Doctors have told him not to do that. But when he checked the sugar level, it was normal. And next day he checked it, went to the doctor. He said, why did you do that? He said, I felt I'm healed. And he checked that it was normal. My God can do mighty things. Will you trust in the Lord? Will you just open your, will you close your eyes and say, Lord, here am I, Lord. Here am I, Lord. I want to change. I want to change in my spiritual atmosphere, Lord. The way I talk, the way I think, the way I see, the way I hear things, the way I read the word of God. I want a new life to read when the, the word of God. Let When I pray, I don't want to make it a formality. I want a real intimacy with my God. I want to have a real connection with my God. Oh, Lord, you speak to me through dreams and visions. Oh, Lord, you speak to me when I sleep, when I talk and I work, Lord. When I'm driving, Lord, you speak to me, Lord. I want your mighty presence in my life, Lord. Oh, whatever happens, virus may increase, things must be bad, but I know my Redeemer leaveth. Hallelujah. I know that nothing will happen without the knowledge of my God. I know he's watching over me. I know I'm in a none and what situation, but my Lord can change. If you believe, trust in the Lord, I'm going to pray for you. Father God, I commit all of us into your hands. Those who have committed their lives into your hands, Lord. Those who are praying to you and they're saying, Lord, my my situation null and void. Oh, tohu bohu situation. Right now, let the brooding presence of the Lord make them develop their faith, Lord. Let them open their eyes and see that the Lord is doing something marvelous inside them. What he has done for Abraham and Abraham and Sarah, or oh, what he has done for uh, Jacob and his life, what is done for Moses, what is done for Israelites, you are going to do the same for us, Lord. Whatever changes, the word of God will never change. Lord, I commit them in your hands as they pray, as they submit their lives. Lord, right now you may touch them, Lord. If you have done that in Hong Kong last week as I was preaching, Lord. If you have done that in India as I was preaching last week, it's not who is preaching. It's the word of God that does it, Lord. So we give you glory and honor, Lord. And I pray that you may do the same for them right now, Lord. May they have testimonies to share that God has done mighty things. I see the mighty presence of God moving through this church and a great revival is breaking out. Many are going to join this church because a new life is being formed ne like never before. I commit all of us into your hands, Lord. Thank you for blessing us, Lord. Continue to speak to us, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.